Hey guys, this is Justin with Rocky Mountain ATV MC, and this is our Suzuki DR650 Adventure Bike Build. All right guys, so in the past few years, I've done a few adventure bike builds on budget-friendly motorcycles, namely the KLR650, WR250R, and DRZ400. And I was pretty excited to finally get to do one on a DR650. I've always heard good things about them. I've heard that they're good off-road, and so I finally got to do one. Now, the DR650, it's a great motorcycle. It's been around for a long time. In fact, Suzuki hasn't made very many changes to it since 1996. So that's nice because there are parts, parts are easy to get for it and you can find a good deal on a used one. Now the engine, it's just a single cylinder, air-cooled engine, carbureted, but it's got proven reliability. The five-speed transmission, um, smooth motor, does just fine at highway speeds. It supposedly can go up to 99 miles an hour, but I haven't tried that. But cruising at 75 on the freeway is no problem for this thing. All right, so a lot of guys are gonna be comparing this bike to the KLR650. Having owned both, um, they're both great adventure bikes, first and foremost. I can tell you that the DR is built a little bit better for off-road and the KLR's built a little bit better for the street. Both make great adventure bikes, so it just kind of depends on what you're doing and what you prefer. So getting on with this bike build, as you can see, we've done a lot of different things to this bike to make it an awesome adventure bike. And it really did turn out good. I've been pretty happy with this thing. So let me show you some of the things that I've done to make this bike an awesome adventure motorcycle. I'm gonna start with some of the more important things and work my way down. All right, guys, the first thing I did was put on JNS engineering foot peg mounts so I could get rid of those awful rubber mounted stock ones. Um, I've also put on some IMS foot pegs just a lot better traction, way better for off-road riding. Next is fuel capacity. That's usually a problem on any bike that you're gonna make turn into an adventure bike is, is fuel range. So there's a few different options. We have tanks from a Cherubis, Clark, but I decided to throw this one on from Safari. It's huge. It's a 7.4 gallon tank, but mine actually, when I filled it up, it held over eight gallons. So big tank and it looks really cool. I've got the fairing for it as well. And the fairing's really nice because it blocks wind, keeps, keeps wind off my chest on the, on the highway. And let's face it, it looks really cool. All right, then I went ahead and put better lighting on. The stock headlight on this bike is horrible. I pulled out the bulb, put in an LED light, and I also put on some LED auxiliary lights. These are from Thumper Jockey. They're the Enduro 3000 light. They're nice because they're small, lightweight. I could hook them to the fairing and they just make night riding so much better. Then I went ahead and put stiffer fork springs and shock springs on the bike. The stock springs are just way too soft for off-road riding, especially if you start carrying luggage. And for more added comfort, I had to throw on a seat concept seat. Now I've put these on all of my um, dual sport adventure motorcycles. I love them. They save your butt on those long rides, but I've got to say, this particular seat for the DR650 is awesome. I don't know if they just had a, a wider base to work with or what, but this seat works awesome on those long rides. Then I went ahead and put a Ricochet aluminum skid plate on the bike. Must have for any motorcycle that's going off road and better tires. I love the Dunlop D606. So I've got those on the front and the rear. And to go along with that, I put in some Bridgestone ultra heavy duty tubes. I really like, like those. Um, they're just tough tubes. Now this bike didn't come stock with rim locks like most off-road motorcycles do, so I've gone ahead and added those as well. That just makes things a little nicer. If you do get a flat, your tire's less likely to fall off the bead. Moving to the handlebars, I've got a lot going on here. First of all, I got rid of the stock bars. They're, they're not very good. They don't feel very comfortable. And I've gone ahead and put some Tusk big bar adapters on with some big bars. I think I'm running the YZ Bend, but it just feels a lot more comfortable. I'm also running Tusk heated grips. 
um, the deflex pro handguards with the integrated turn signal and I've got the double take mirrors now there's a couple different kind of double take mirrors they have an enduro one which has a round mirror on it and these are actually the adventure ones I've run the enduro ones in the past and for whatever reason maybe it's the bike but it seems like these adventure mirrors vibrate less so I really like these adventure mirrors from double take for my navigation and safety I'm running the Garmin Montana 680 GPS and I've also got the Garmin inReach and we actually have a video on that if you're interested in learning more about the inReach all right moving to the dash of the motorcycle on my um, safari fairing I've got a lot of room to put some things so I've got a couple 12 volt outlets to keep my GPS my inReach my cell phone whatever charged um, those are really important I put a tachometer on a voltmeter and switches for my heated grips and my auxiliary lights regarding performance there's a few things that I've done I put on an FMF Q4 silencer now the nice thing about that silencer not only does it weigh like seven pounds less than the stock exhaust it breathes a lot better and it's not obnoxiously loud it is louder than stock but it's a good exhaust on the head pipe I'm running the stock head pipe but I did pull it off and grind the weld off the front of the pipe um, sometimes on these bikes those welds can be kind of big and obstruct the flow of the exhaust with the exhaust flowing better I needed to get the intake flowing better so I drilled some holes on the top of the airbox and I'm running a JD jet kit now the nice thing about JD jet kits is they give you a table and you know so depending on your elevation temperature the mods you've done you can set the jetting up accordingly so the bike runs great with those modifications now no adventure bike would be complete if you can't pack your gear so I've got the tusk pannier racks on here tusk panniers and the top rack I've also got the wolfman expedition um, duffel bag this is a medium I've had this thing for years it holds all my camping gear uh, really rugged the nice thing about the pannier racks is you can run the aluminum boxes but you can also run soft bags if you want so I've run the um, giant loop bags on here as well as the Wolfman bags they work great and moving up front I've got the Wolfman enduro tank bag I really like the enduro tank bag because it's just the right size and it looks good on the bike moving back to the seat real quick I forgot to mention the tusk seat heater I put in here just like heated grips a heated seat is really nice now one thing to think about if you're going to add heated grips heated seat is how much power you're pulling from the bike we do sell a higher watt stator for this bike but going to the LED headlight bulb LED tail light bulb um, makes it so you can run this stuff a lot easier to kind of finish the bike off I put on a warp 9 chain guide which is a lot stronger than the stock one a JNS sprocket cover which allows you to see the front sprocket and prevents mud from packing up inside a JNS kickstand pad polished reservoir cap aluminum shift lever engine plugs an awesome looking attack graphics kit for the safari tank and fairing and lastly I threw on a Yamaha YZ front fender so of course the fender isn't necessary but I figure if I'm going to put on a cool looking safari tank and fairing I need to have a cool looking fender so I grabbed that off a new YZ I had to drill the holes um, different but it fit up pretty good and I think it makes the bike look awesome all right a few more things I want to point out with the DR650 they kind of have a reputation for not having a lot of grease in their bearings so it's a good idea to take things apart your linkage um, swing arm steering and grease the bearings the other thing if you have a DR650 that's older than 2014 you want to get a counter shaft seal retainer they're really inexpensive the bikes had a problem where the seal will pop out and lose all of its oil so you definitely want to look into one of those and finally you want to put high strength thread locker on the neutral sending unit bolts and we have a video that shows you how to do that step by step walks you through it all right guys so that's my dr650 bike build I've got to say the bike turned out awesome I love riding this thing now I want to hear what you guys have done to your dr650s subscribe to our YouTube channel and put a comment below let me know what you've done to your bike let me know if I missed something and while you're there be sure and check out our other bike builds how-to videos and product spotlights check out our website we've got all the parts and accessories and apparel that you need for your adventure ride including everything that I've done to this bike thanks for watching